Hello and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Christina. And in today's video, I really want to show you five DIY projects. It's all about recreate, restyle, and recycle. So there's going to be lots to cover, so let's just dive right in. Using super soft, thick, chunky chenille yarn by loops and threads, I want to show you how easy it is to knit just using your fingers. I also want to show you how easy it is to make it even thicker by using two rolls at the same time. So I'm just going to show you here how you can make a slip knot to start your chain of stitches. Each stitch loop will be about one to two inches. So using my index finger and my thumb, all I'm going to do is pinch the working yarn through to create another stitch. And you're just going to keep repeating this until you've created about 35 stitches and that's going to create your chain to start your blanket. Because this yarn is so thick and we're doubling up, it's going to actually stitch up really fast. I'm going to show you how to use your index finger as a crochet hook and you're just going to do simple single crochet. Again, for this blanket, I'm going to make a chain of 35 stitches. Once you've made that chain, we're now going to make our first row of stitches and you're going to go into the first loop at the top with your index finger to create your first stitch. As you can see, there's actually two stitches. I'm now going to loop one. I'm going to grab my working yarn. I'm using my thumb as kind of this pincher. Then I'm going to use my index finger and thumb to pinch my first loop. Then I'm going to do it again to go through all of the yarn. That is a simple single crochet. Now I'm going to go into my second stitch. Again, you're going to have two stitches. You're going to yarn in one hoop or loop. You're going to stitch. Then you're going to have two stitches on your finger. You're going to grab that working yarn and pull another loop and have one remaining. It's that easy. It's just a repetitive pattern over and over, but I'm going to show you how you can make a rib effect really simply. A really simple rule with the art of crochet is at the end of each row, you're going to add a stitch before you turn over to continue to the next row. That applies to every row. To create a rib effect for your blanket, you're going to notice at the top, there is actually two hoops at the top here. So there's one, there's two. Now you can actually go through both, but we're only going to go through the first one. We've gone into half of the stitch in order to create this rib. And as you can see, this is the ribbed effect that you're going to get. So instead of going into the entire stitch, you're only going into half of it. So that first two, not all four. Once you're completed a ball of yarn, it's really easy. You're just going to fasten a new yarn with the old one. They're never going to finish at the exact same time. So not to worry, just keep adding as you go. Just a simple knot and a little snip of the tail. Let's do a close up of the stitching one more time. You're always going to have a stitch on your index finger. I always remember I have to yarn through once, then twice, and that's my single crochet. With a couple rows of practice, you'll have this down in no time. It's that easy. So, I want to show you how to close your blanket. For your last stitch, you're going to continue as always. Then what you're going to do is you're going to put one loop stitch into the last, take your working yarn and yarn it through, cut it, and whatever remaining tail you have, you can just weave it through the blanket or cut it. This blanket finished was about 50 inches long and 32 inches wide.
All you're going to need is some parchment paper, a bowl choice, as well as something that you can roll with and preferably something that you don't use it with food. And all you're going to do is just take this paper clay and you're just going to treat it almost like Play-Doh. It's a little bit firm. Once you get it worked in, we are going to add in a little bit of water because I find that it's a little bit more flexible when you add in just touches of water as you create your shape. I've worked with paper clay several times, but I've never actually handmade something. I've always used a mold. So I've really wanted to try this for quite some time. I did notice that you will get little air pockets and sometimes the paper clay as you're working with it and of course the parchment paper is creating lines. It's really just being a bit patient with it and keep rolling it out. Adding that little bit of water really helps. And you want it to be about maybe a quarter of an inch, especially for a bowl. What I am trying to do is maintain the thickness throughout so this way it's even. You can create all kinds of amazing home art deco stuff with paper clay. I'm just going to demonstrate on this bowl. So all I'm going to do is keep kind of working the paper clay into the bowl. I'm going to keep adding a little bit of water and smoothing out my paper clay. Once you have everything the way you want it, all I'm going to do is straighten my bowl rim. So I'm going to just use a knife to cut off any excess just to make it more leveled. Once I've completed that, I'm just going to go around and smooth out the edges so this way it's nice and even and it's nice and consistent. I keep seeing this amazing look with planters, so I wanted to try it with this paper clay bowl. And I'm going to just use a dowel and I'm going to go around and make holes. Now what I did notice is I had to go in and I actually had to keep spinning the dowel around to remove the paper clay inside the hole. So you'll definitely want to be careful when you're removing it. You don't want it to be 100% dry or it won't come off very nicely. So just be mindful of how dry it is, but it is easier to remove when it's still a little bit moist. Now what I want to do is I want to sand it and I'm also still going to be adding a little bit more of the water to smooth out where I've made creases with that dowel on the inside. So it's just being patient with it. I'm using a 120 grit and I'm being super soft and just going to go around lightly and sand it so this way it's nice and smooth to the touch and I'm going to go back with the water and smooth that rim on the interior of the bowl. Once everything is completely dry overnight, I'm going to go ahead and paint this. I'm just going to use this Deco Art, basically an acrylic paint in a tan color. What I want to go for is a kind of a watercolor effect. So I'm going to add little bits of paint and I'm also going to keep adding water and it's just going to create highlights and lowlights with the paint. And I'm just going to keep playing with it until I like it. You can use any types of colors and styles. You could even maybe go with a mud cloth pattern. Again, giving it kind of this boho, maybe even a little bit of a Moroccan vibe to it, but it's a lot of fun to play with the paper clay and it's amazing the things that you can create with it. Now I wanted the look to be very handmade, so some of the little imperfections, because this was not meant to look like it was done on a clay wheel that you spin the clay with. So what I want to do here is just add in some jute and I'm just going to double twine it over. So I'm just going to loop it in each of the holes twice and just kind of create a belt all the way around the bowl.
Starting off with some pine boards that are six inches wide and two inches thick, as well as some metal brackets for underneath, I'm going to go ahead and sand these back with an 80 and 120 grit. For those metal brackets, I'm actually going to paint them black just so they're more masked and inconspicuous. So I've sanded these boards back. I'm going to go ahead and use a paint wash, just using a chalk paint in a cocoa color. And I kind of just want to take the yellow tone out. So using a paint wash instead of a stain is so much easier and I find is just a little bit more forgiving. I'll probably go ahead and put two full paint washes on these boards and then I can proceed to my next step. My paint wash mix is normally a 50% paint to 50% water and I do find it's really important to leave something to stir inside your paint mix as the paint seems to always want to settle to the bottom so I like to frequently keep stirring it as I'm using it. For a nice bleached weathered look I'm just going to go ahead and use plain white wax on top of the dried paint wash. I like to use a small waxing brush, but you can use a lint-free cloth as well. Wax is fantastic for your furniture pieces, especially for raw woods. It helps keep it conditioned as well as hydrated. Because I'm putting my own table together, I will only be doing the top as well as the two sides, and then we'll be putting the boards together and putting some new legs on. I wanted to make this table actually for my kitchen and I have a huge plant obsession and I have all these starter plants and this is going to be the perfect table just for this little garden I've started. Wax will dry fairly quickly, usually within the day, but it's not fully cured for at least 20 to 30 days so just be careful about what you put on top of the tabletop before it's completely cured. It's an excellent sealer. Using the charcoal black by Rasoleum, I've gone ahead and sprayed those brackets. And now we're going to make some accent holes and we're only using about half inch screw and we're going to be making two on each end. And we've drawn out exactly where the legs and these accent holes are going. These metal brackets are going to anchor the two boards together and we're going to be putting four hairpin legs as well as we're going to be putting in some jute rope. I wanted to make sure everything was fastened and secured well because the table will actually be holding a fair amount of weight. I just wanted to add a personal touch with using the jute rope. So I will go ahead and thread that in. I am doing a major makeover in my own bedroom, so I'm going to redo this five drawer dresser with a new makeover. I have been filming this makeover for this bedroom, so I'll be sharing that in the next few tutorials. All I'm going to do with a 60 grit is go around and sand it right down to the bare bones. I wanted to bring back some of the natural element of the wood of this dresser, so I'm definitely going to be focusing on the drawers as well as this tabletop. So again, just using that 60 grit just to get the bulk off, and then I'm going to go and do a fine sand with a 120 grit and a 220 grit as well, just to give it that nice smooth like butter feeling. Now because this was chalk painted, the chalk paint itself is coming off no problem. It's just a water-based product, but the underneath is actually a really tough varnish. So that's why using either a 40 or a 60 grit is really important when you really want to bring back that natural wood. 
Now for the sides and some of the frame, I know I'm going to be redoing a paint to it. I haven't decided what yet, so I'm not too worried about removing all the paint, but I do want to make sure I'm getting any of the top coat sealer off before applying a new paint so this way it won't peel in the future. So now she's nude again, but like I mentioned, I didn't get everything off the sides in the frame. I just lightly buffed it just to get off the top coat so I could go ahead and put a new application. And I think based on the Benjamin Moore collection that I've been going through for my own home, I'm going to go ahead and use this beautiful color. It's actually the what they call edge comb gray and it's a very very warm gray maybe even a slight little hint of yellow to it i'm just using a two inch wide angled synthetic brush nothing fancy just to get my frame all done and i want to paint all the inside of the frame as well as the outside because I didn't remove all of the original paint, only the top coat sealer, it's a little bit on the darker side and this is a lighter color, so it was probably safe just to go ahead and put two full coats on. I'm going to go ahead and prepare my drawer fronts, but in the meanwhile I'm going to let this first coat completely dry and then I can proceed to the second coat. But as you can see it's got great coverage and I love the color. I really wanted to create my own hardware and I'm going to use these 3 quarter inch bolt loops and because they're a silver plate I'm going to go ahead and use this flat matte finish in just pure white and give them a spray and I'm going to be using 16 of them. For the drawer fronts I'm going to use the same thing I did for that console table and use my cocoa chalk paint wash. Again, it's just a 50% paint, 50% water wash, and I'm going to do all the drawer fronts with two coats of this wash. I like to be a little bit meticulous to making sure I do the very tops of the drawers as well as the bottom and sides when I do any type of color enhancement or change. Let it be to the color of the paint or the wood color that I want to obtain. For a white wood look, I'm going to go ahead and use the white wax. I'm going to actually be using this all over the drawer fronts as well as the tabletop of the dresser. If you'd like a more durable finish, I recommend to use a lacquer finish and then you can use a white wax just for decorative purposes. The white wax will seal the project as well. Now we're going to go ahead and put those ring loops in and we're just going to adhere them to the drawers and we have these dowels that we're going to be using. The dowels are three quarter round and what I wanted to do is to secure so this way it doesn't wobble and it secures as a drawer front is I'm going to use this quarter inch round jute with a little bit of hot glue. My husband's giving me a hand with this which is great. We are just going to wind this around and it's actually just going to create um, kind of like this friction between the two ring loops so this way the dowel is not going to jiggle back and forth and it's going to keep the drawer pull nice and firm to hold everything firmly in place as well as holding it with the glue and waiting for it to dry it was just super helpful to have the extra set of hands it went along pretty smoothly so we went ahead and did this to all the drawer fronts the dowel sizes will depend on the dresser and the size of your dresser, so we just did the measurements based on the drawer fronts for this, but again, they were 3 quarter inch round dowels. The metal ring loops as well as the dowels come in different sizes, so depending on what you think you need for your project.
So I've been sampling all kinds of fun colors as I've been doing these makeover for rooms in my home. And I also have these apple juice jugs that I think would be fantastic as some home decor. I recently just tried the baking powder and I have never tried cornstarch, so I thought I would give this a try. Any type of glass, really important to clean it really well, but I'm going to just go ahead and use this Rust-Oleum's flat white spray paint on the glass first. It's basically going to act as a primer, which you could use that as well. I just find that the spray paint is just fast, quick, and easy. This spray paint dries really fast in room temperature, so in about an hour or two. So this Nantucket Gray, as well as this Gray Cashmere, I'm really dying to see what they look like. But I thought it would be a lot of fun to give this cornstarch texture um, a 50-50 mix with the paint and see what it looks like. I really love the design of these glass jugs, so I thought this would make great home decor, so I couldn't really go wrong with the idea. I just kind of eyeballed the amount, but I kind of went on that theory of 50-50. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this a stir, and I'm going to go ahead and just apply it on. There's no right and wrong, it's just playing with the paint and the textures until you're happy. There is no particular brush stroke or type of brush that you need to do this with. You can even use an old chippy brush. I think what I will do though is to give it kind of a vessel look is just keep my brush strokes going on a horizontal and I will definitely probably go with two full coats and this is just going to keep uh, more distinguished lines with my textures. Most of all have fun with it. You can't again go wrong with this. It's just paint and a little bit of texture just to add some warmth and decor. I had just mentioned that you could use cornstarch in a previous tutorial and because I actually hadn't used it, I am kind of felt that, you know what, I should be using it before I recommend it. So I really wanted to make sure that it worked and it was a good source of making textures with any type of paint. So I was pretty happy that I got a chance to do this. I was super delighted with the results, both with the baking powder and the cornstarch. So these are typical household items that you probably already have. So if you have some leftover paint and some old glass jars, go and have some fun and play with it and see what you can create. So to create a little bit more dimension as well as some highlights, I'm just going to go ahead and add some white wax. And the white wax doesn't necessarily have to be brushed into the same direction as you did the paint. All I want to do is get the wax in the low point, so I'll just use a lint-free cloth just to wipe it back a little bit. And it's just going to add some really nice little highlights to it, as well as give it more dimension. If you'd like, you can always take a 120 grit and just give it a little bit of a buff if you don't want it to be gritty. And for the actual tops of these jars, I'm just going to add in a little jute top with some hot glue. Thank you so much for watching today's video and please let me know in the comments below which one your favorite project was. I really love to read your comments and looking forward to sharing many more tutorials with you soon. So if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and notification bell. It's going to tell you when I upload my next video. And until then, stay safe. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Take care.